everyone, it's Keely here for Soy and Shea and thank you so much for joining me for another soap making video. I want to start by saying a big thank you to everyone that left feedback on the midweek video. I really do appreciate it. Don't worry, I'm not going to stop doing the chit chatty videos because a lot of you really like them. Um, I just thought that doing that sort of um, French lavender theme to some relaxing music was just perfect for that soap. And I know that some people really do like them. I myself like those really nice calm videos just before going to bed because I find them nice and relaxing. And I like to watch all the chit chatty videos when I'm working or if I'm you know home alone and just want something to watch. But I will continue to do the, all the chit chatty videos and maybe throw in the odd musical one here and there. But today what we're going to do is make a soap using Dragon's Blood number four. Now if you've ever seen my previous video of me attempting to make Dragon's Blood number four, you would know that it was a utter fail. Well, not really. We did actually end up rescuing the soap in the end, but it is perhaps one of the funniest videos I made and perhaps one of the funniest soaps I've ever made. I chose to laugh because if I didn't laugh, I was going to cry and at the end of the day, it still turned into soap. So why not laugh about it? If you haven't seen that video, I'll leave a link up in the top corner for you so you can go and check out what happened with that particular soap. I worked out that I had miscalculated my water on that one and said I was going to redo Dragon's Blood number four. Well, my customers have been asking for a new batch of it, so today we are going to go along and make this particular soap. I have drawn myself out a nice little picture. Well, it's a lot of scribbles. My plan is to do a couple of layers and put a hanger through it, and um, hopefully all will go well. But we'll go along and see if we can tame this dragon's blood number four. Let's go. Okay, so let's get this soap started. In my bucket, I have my usual oil mix and we're sitting at a room temperature of about 17 degrees today. And in my big jug here, I have my sodium hydroxide and distilled water solution. And I always put a little bit of tussar silk into my distilled water as well. And that just helps with the sort of silkiness of the soap when you go to use it. So what I'm going to do as always is I'm going to pour my lye water solution down my stick blender just to stop any splashback. I'm going to mix it up to emulsion and then I'm going to split it out for a couple of colours. My first colour here, I have mixed some really red mica from Nurture Soaps in with some olive oil. I'll pour off of that yay much for now and we'll have a look at what we've got in a moment. In this bucket here, I again have some of that really red mica, but I have mixed it in with a bit of activated charcoal as well. I think I might need just a little bit more in each of these to get the look that I am going for. That looks really good like that. Let's catch all those drips. So into my big bucket, I have got this little um, premix pot. There is some lime um, mica or lime spider mica in there. And I also have some neon harlequin pigment in there too. I've dispersed that again into some olive oil. I find when using the neons, I need to disperse it. Otherwise, it goes all um, lumpy in my soap and doesn't actually... Um, disperse properly in the actual soap butter so we'll get all of that in there get as much of that out as I possibly can so we get a really nice bright color and then I'm going to mix my colors in good thing about mixing your color or pre-mixing your colors in with that little bit of olive oil means that you can actually mix them up with a spatula which really helps if you are trying to keep your batter nice and fluid so that means I've been able to do that this will stay nice and fluid while I do the next step okay so they are now all mixed I'm going to come back to my big bucket and work with this one first I have got my fragrance oil here and I'm going to pour a good part of that in and then reserve the rest for the red color I'm actually going to use my stick blender to mix in that bit of fragrance I've just found that it seems to disperse better and I get a nicer finish on my soap I don't know if that's just me or if that is an actual thing so 
I've got that fragrance in there now and I'm still really worried that this one is going to turn to soap in the bucket like it did last time so I'm going to move a little bit quicker here. What I'm going to do is pour about half of this green into my mould and probably just a little under half so we can do a high top on this soap. I'm going to pop that over there, move this one back out the way. I'm going to come back to my reds here. Get my spatula out. I am going to split the fragrance up between those two. Get as much of that out of there so we don't waste any. And then I'm going to mix that fragrance into the red. Okay, so the next thing I am going to do is I've got some extravagance gold mica in my pot here. And I'm going to drop it into my darker red. All right, so just to create myself a little bit more washing up, I'm going to grab another container. And oh no, yep. This must be the really red. That's not going to work for me. What I'm going to do is plop it into this bucket. That is, yeah, this is a bad fragrance. So I don't think my last time of doing this really had much to do with the fact that I um, messed up my water discount. This is to do with this fragrance. So this was that um, Dragon's Blood number four. Um, I don't think I'll be using this one again. We will definitely be going for a different dragon's blood next time which is a shame because this one does smell really good and it has been so popular with my customers let's get all of this out of here oh yeah oh well i'm gonna go and give this a bit of a smack down all right at least to know that this layer is now all set and thick. I was going to do a hanger swirl. Now I'm not. So <laughs> let's um, get this on the top of here. And yeah, we'll have to do a bit of a review about um, which dragon's blood to use. I was given some really good suggestions um, the last time. What I am hoping is that one of our suppliers here... Um, is going to start bringing in some of the um, Nature's Garden fragrances to sell. And I'm really hoping that Dragon's Blood is going to be on that list because their Dragon's Blood is one of the nicest I have ever smelt. I am going to just do the best I can to get this spooned in. We'll let it get into a bit of a gel phase as well. That will make it easier to do a bit of a knockdown to knock down any air bubbles that might be in this one. But yeah, this is another fail for the dragon's blood. Let's get this uh, squished in as much as I can. Squishing it down to try and get rid of any air bubbles that might be there. And I'm going to get the top as smooth as I can so I can kind of put that green layer on the top as well. I uh, don't think there's any point in rushing now because that, yeah, that green <laughs> set up as well. Oh, the joys of making soap. Funny thing is, the last time I actually posted this video, um, and I quite clearly stated in the, um, uh, in the sort of title and in the description that it was a fail, the number of thumbs downs I got on that video to me was just absolutely hilarious. Uh, it doesn't bother me if people put thumbs downs on videos. Um, it, you know, at the end of the day, the algorithm for um, for YouTube still sees it as an interaction. So it, it actually doesn't do anything negative putting those thumbs downs on there. What I would love to know is if you ever do feel the need to thumbs down a video, let the creators know why. Because if it's something to do with that you don't like the lighting, maybe they can fix it. If the sound quality is not good, they can fix that. But if you just leave a thumbs down and don't tell them a reason why, um, they can never actually fix it. And it may be that they're completely unaware of something like that. If you're just thumbs downing it because you don't like the colour or something, uh, that's a completely different sort of matter. They can't fix 
those sort of issues but other things such as lighting volume um, things like that they can be easily fixed all right so I don't know how I'm going to get this out of here maybe I need to leave this sit here for a moment just so it starts to go into its gel phase and then I'll be able to get it out of this pot interesting thing with this soap is that it's actually not got as hot as it did last time if you've watched that last video um, it got so hot that even as I was trying to push it into the mold it was just too hot to do anything with this one is actually staying quite cool so that's quite interesting using that extra water must just stop it from um, getting really hot but obviously that fragrance oil is a misbehavior Let's get the last of this out. Try and rescue this top as much as I possibly can. Hopefully the red um, all smooths itself out as well. I have made a right mess of this mould this time. Um, no, I'm not even going to do a scrape of the bucket. My hands are now sore, I think. All right, we've got that bucket completely. <laughs> completely scraped out. I'm so disappointed because I had this beautiful picture all drawn up of what I wanted it to look like. I had such high hopes that this time it was going to play nice because it wasn't, you know, I thought I'd worked out what the problem was last time. I think the last time I still did um, have issues because I misjudged how much water I was adding. Um, this time I have gone for that full water um, to try and keep it nice and fluid but it must just be the fragrance oil interacting um, with the chemical process of soap making but you know it is what it is people still bought my last dragon's blood they've been asking me to make more so here it is <laughs> I hope you guys actually still like it the way it is. What I'm going to do is just clean this bit of mess up and then we're going to pretty it up. Okay, let's try and pretty this up. I have got some clear melt and pour, which I have just coloured with a bit of red um, liquid um, soap colourant. I'm just going to put a very fine drizzle along the top here, like I did with my original one. Got a few too many bubbles in that bit. Let's come back. Fill in just a wee bit more there. That's looking a bit better than it did. And I am coming in with some extravagance gold mica, and we're just going to spritz the top of that really to pick up all those peaks from off the soap, and then it will look like it was meant to look that way. All right, so I am now going to leave this one sit here for the next sort of 18 to 24 hours and then we'll come back and we'll cut it and then I'll determine whether or not I'm going to show this video and we'll see what the inside looks like. Okay, so let's cut into this dragon's blood soap. It feels really hard. That is one of the advantages to having a soap move that fast on you. They set up really quick and they go really hard so it will be a really long lasting bar of soap because of how hard this has gone to. I did use full water on this one or I say full water it was 35% which is full water for me. Um, I just don't even think if I went up to the 38% that um, this fragrance would play nice at all and it's such a shame because it is such a lovely strong fragrance for dragon's blood I think this may be one that if you're going to make it you need to make it as a single color and Just have done with it like that or maybe do layers where you um, mix the layers up Individually as you actually need them and don't try and any swirl. So we'll have a look at what this one actually looks like on the inside. At least this time round, the top does not look nearly as bad as what the original one did that I did in this Dragon's Blood number four. Okay, so let's see what the damage is on the inside. And wow, that's actually really, really nice and not 
terrible like I thought it was going to be. You can really see those gold mica um, lines in there. It is really, really pretty how it's actually set itself off. I do have some gaps on the side, but unlike the last one I did where I literally had to basically cut the edges off and make it a narrow bar, this one is looking really good I'm actually very very pleased with that let's get one from towards the middle just in case that piece was pure fluke that there were no bubbles in there but no nope, we've got another solid bar so as I said I do have a couple of these sort of air pockets in the side that one's not particularly bad this one's got a few more sort of gaps but I have done another video and I'll leave a link up the top for you where I show how I fix the side of my soaps up with the little piece of scrap piece that I get off the end of all of my soaps. I basically use it like, um, well it is, it's soap dough and I use it to fill in all these a bit like putty. But considering how much grief this fragrance oil has given me, this is actually a really great design. So just to give you an idea, this was my original drawing and it's really not that far off. I'm not very good at drawing my patterns, I just do squiggles and stuff but the idea behind this was that I wanted the two layers the the bright greens up the top and the bottom and through the middle I wanted two colors of red and I actually said a black mica swirl I changed it to a gold one as I was actually setting my colors up and the only thing I wasn't able to do that I actually drew on my picture was that I wanted to put a hanger swirl through it so that the the red and the green kind of intermingled with each other um, a bit like it started to do there but really not very much. Um, so before putting this one to bed last time I did say that I would um, debate whether or not I was going to show you this video but the more I sat there and thought about it the more I thought no I will show you guys just to show that not every soap actually works out the way you want it and even when you think that you've worked out what went wrong with the soap sometimes it is just the fragrance that is the issue. So I will make another dragon's blood soap once this one has gone but I am definitely going to find another supplier for it. I was told that Heirloom Bath and Body do a really nice body safe version of this fragrance so I think I might have to get theirs in for the next um, Dragon's Blood soap but overall I'm really happy with that. I really love how that's come together in there. It looks like some sort of gemstone through the middle so I'm really pleased with that. So I hope you have enjoyed or at least had a good laugh at me trying to tame this dragon once again. If you did, why not leave me a thumbs up and any comments down below. If you've got any questions, I will get back to you as soon as I possibly can. And until the next video, I hope you have a great week and I will see you then. Bye.